very beginning of the relaunch, there were uh, these creatures called Black Caracals, and there were only five spawned in the whole game, and they dropped Fleece. Fleece is needed not just for Weaver, but also for every other crafting classes in the game as a material. Crafting classes tends to require a little bit of materials from other crafting classes. And that's where we saw a weakness. Well, I saw the weakness, and uh, my roommate capitalized on it with me, helped me run all the bots. And we went full in on it. We capitalized on the market, we created several accounts, got them to max level. We always created bards, because bards had a silence ability, or an interrupt. It was very important for raids and dungeons and, and bosses and stuff. And a uh, mechanic to this interrupt was that the server would prioritize the packet that had the interrupt in it. To make sure that you didn't get screwed and you didn't miss your interrupt because of latency or something like that. So the interrupt spell for bards is actually on the very highest tier of priority for the servers to process. What that means was, is that we could macro in that interrupt into a slash target black caracal slash cast interrupt uh, shot. And we would tag the black caracals for ourselves, you know, about 200 milliseconds before anyone else had the opportunity to. And we set up these bards at look at the black caracal locations on different servers and dominated the caracal market. We fleeced people, <laughs> just selling these fleece on like 10 different servers or so. We managed to accrue quite a lot of money in a very short amount of time. And that was like um, one of our first very successful botting endeavors. Yeah, we tried to uh, eliminate as many potential points of detection as possible, which means we use as many in-game mechanics as we can to achieve botting. And we only rely on software at the last possible step. Which is the input. Yeah, the inputs. The input. Scriba Talk then goes on to explain that bots can usually be divided into two different categories, depending on how they work. Bots generally come in two categories. Uh, one is like 99.9% .9 of bots. The other one is point. 1% of bots. The vast majority of bots use injection-based methods, and that means that the bot injects itself into your memory, into the executable as it's running, and it sniffs the packets that are being sent, and it sends other packets to emulate you performing actions. If you're allowed to put the game, minimize it to tray while the bot's running, or otherwise be doing something else with your computer while the bot's running, it's an injection-based bot. Now the issue with injection-based, well, I guess I should go over the benefit. It's significantly easier to program. It's more universally compatible. It's far more accurate. You can do far more stuff with an injection-based bot. However, since you are breaking into the software, you are doing something illicit with the software, it can be detected, and it almost always is. The only times that injection-based bots are, aren't detected is when the creator is very, very uh, aggressive with making sure that that only certain people get the bot and they charge like a ludicrous price for it and there's only a handful of people that use it. Those are the only situations where an injection-based bot doesn't get caught. The majority of the time, eventually, they do. The other, far less frequently used type of bot is called a keyboard emulation and image detection. And what these bots do is they look at the actual stuff that's happening on your screen and they physically move your mouse and your keyboard around. No, well, not physically in the real world, but they actually move your mouse around and actually send the inputs as though you were using your mouse and your keyboard. So you can't use your computer for anything else because your mouse is moving around and clicking on things on your screen this type of bot is much harder to detect. In fact, he claims that it is almost universally uncatchable. And since you are just sending inputs, especially if you add in random weights, which we do, of course, as long as a, a human being doesn't like 
a human being GM doesn't show up and watch you doing this for a large amount of time to prove that you're automating, you can't be caught. Um, there's no like automated way to catch someone using image detection and keyboard mouse emulation. I've never gotten banned because of a image detection and keyboard and mouse emulation bot before. 